the USMLE Step 2 exam is undoubtedly the most important exam in medical school. This 9-hour exam covers everything you've learned in your clerkships in over 300 multiple choice questions, and your performance on this exam is the only standardized part of your application that residencies can use to assess your candidacy. Ultimately, your application is much more than just your Step 2 score, but you want to use it to open doors and not close them. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is JR Smith and I'm a fourth year medical student at the Mayo Clinic. I recently completed my step two exam and I am super excited to share that it went just about as good as I could have hoped for. So I wanted to share what worked for me and hopefully it will work for you too, but I was a little hesitant to share my actual score. For one, because this is personal information that's going to be on my application, but for two, and more importantly, I wouldn't want to discourage or discredit anyone else's step two experience. Everyone's definition of a good score is different. There are definitely scores higher than mine and there are gonna be scores lower than mine. I just wanted to share my experience, my score, and the strategies and resources I use to achieve that score for anyone else who has similar goals. So I actually received my score on my orthopedic surgery home sub internship. I got the email in the middle of the day, but I had a long day in the OR and then was actually on call that evening. And it wasn't until around 1 a.m. when the ED was calm that I found a call room, said a prayer, and opened up my score. And Madison didn't actually know that I opened my score, so when I got home later that next morning, kind of played dumb. Why am I more nervous than you are? Oh, there it is, score report. Kari, you ready? Kari. You ready? All right, what are we happy with? Above a 250? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? What were you thinking? Yeah. yeah. What were you thinking? <laughs> yeah. Or above 240. Yeah. How about like anything above 240? Oh my oh. god! Sneak looked last night and I was like, no, no, surprise no, you. <laughs> no, no. So as you can see, I got a 266 on step two, which was a huge blessing and honestly, God gets the credit. But outside of God looking out for your boy, I think there are a few things that I did that can help anyone who would want to score similarly on their step two. We're going to talk about two topics during this video, my dedicated study schedule and the resources that I use. There's no really reason to overcomplicate it with anything else. So let's get into it with my schedule, which legitimately started when medical school started. For any first or second year medical students or even pre-medical students watching this, a key to success on your step exam is mastering the material early as you are exposed to it in your pre-clerkship and clerkship rotations. There is an amazing analogy described by Will Smith where he talks about how overwhelming the process of building a wall can be. But he says, when you set out to build a wall, you don't start by saying, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest wall that's ever been built. You say, I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid. If you do that every single day, soon you will have a wall. Step two is that wall. And regardless of what you're currently learning in medical school, whether that's biochemistry or your family medicine rotation, that is the brick you're responsible for today. And unfortunately, we can't go back in time, but if you lay today's brick down as perfect as you can, you'll set the precedent for the bricks that'll be laid tomorrow and the days after. I have a few videos describing how I study in general, so for all of the pre-dedicated study advice, make sure to check those out. But I wanna move forward into how I actually studied in my dedicated study period. I finished my last clerkship in March of this year, but then I had quite a bit of traveling for conferences and weddings through much of March and April. I went to Vegas, Connecticut, North Carolina, Iowa, and Florida, all within the span of these two months. My step exam was scheduled for May 13th, and I got home from all of this traveling on April 24th, so that only left a little less than three weeks for a real true dedicated study period. Now, during March and much of April, I was still trying to study as much as I could, but it was relatively sporadic. But a few things that I did accomplish during this semi-dedicated period was first taking a baseline practice exam and second, completing my first pass throughout UWorld. On March 21st, I took the NBME 9 practice exam and scored a 237. So about 30 points less than what I scored on my test date, less than two months away from my test date, but I was still pretty happy with the start. It was confirmation that I had set at least a decent foundation and the bricks that I had laid so far were in pretty good shape. And for the rest of the time during this travel period, I made it a goal to complete the rest of the UWorld that I had remaining for my clerkships, which was about 20% of the UWorld Step 2 question bank. Some days I would do up to 120 questions, and other days I did zero. 
There actually was a benefit to having flights delayed because it felt like airports were the main place I would study during this time. But on average during this time, I would try to do at least one 40 question set four to five times a week. But again, it was sporadic and the goal was just to finish the question bank before my true dedicated period started when I got home from all the traveling. I ended up with a 73% on my first pass on UWorld, and I actually went back and calculated the percent that I got right on my initial practice exam, that NBME number nine, and that was 70%. So that told me that I had about 70% of the material down, and that 70% equates to somewhere around the high 230s, low 240s. So now it's April 24th, and I'm home for good, entering my true dedicated study period about three weeks from my test date. The way I wanted to create my dedicated schedule during these three weeks was based on the amount of practice exams that I had access to. Essentially, I wanted to space those exams out in a way that I could regularly track my progress over consistent intervals. The practice exams that I took included NBME 9, 10, 11, and 12, UWorld Sim 1 and 2, the AMBOSS self-assessment, and the free 120 that the NBME provides. I had already taken NBME number 9, so that left 7 practice exams over the course of this 3 weeks, or about 2 exams per week. To determine the order I would take these practice exams, I spent an unhealthy amount of time on Reddit to determine which exams were most representative of the real thing. Ultimately, the order in which I took them was NBME 9 as my baseline, then 10, UWorld Sim 1, then NBME 11, then the AMBOSS self-assessment, mostly because the timing that this assessment was running, then NBME 12, UWorld Sim 2, and finally the free 120. I would take them every three to four days and review them the same day. I found that if you wait to review questions, it takes significantly longer because you basically have to reread the entire question to remember what it's talking about and what you were thinking in the moment. Instead, if you review them shortly after taking them, the material is still fresh in your head. After reviewing, I would either create Anki cards or unlock relevant Anki cards from the Anking Step 2 deck based on questions that I missed or was iffy about. On the days that I wasn't doing practice exams, I was redoing the UWorld question bank. For the first week and a half or so, I was doing about four 40 block question sets that were timed and set to random to best simulate what I would actually experience on the real deal. And again, I would review each block immediately after finishing and then unlock the corresponding Anki cards. And for UWorld, there is an amazing Anki add-on where you can locate the cards specific to the questions you just saw, and I use that religiously. I will leave a link to that add-on in the description below. But for the last week and a half or so, I moved up to about six 40 block question sets. And this was a tough task for sure. Doing 240 questions a day is, is, is it's, it's pretty aggressive. But my thinking was if I could get used to doing six blocks of 40, then when I'm faced with eight blocks, it won't seem too crazy. The goal was just to build my endurance. And I knew on the real deal that added energy of game day would get me through the two additional blocks I would see. Now again, I did review on the same day even when I was doing 240 questions, but I put review in quotes because I definitely was not spending as much time reviewing as I was when I was doing less questions. Basically, at this point, if I knew it, I didn't really bother reading any of the explanation. I ultimately was able to redo 70% of the UWorld question bank at the end of the three weeks, and my average rose to 84%, which was an encouraging improvement for my initial run through UWorld. Now, one important key during these three weeks of dedicated is that I had been taking one day off per week where I didn't do any questions and just tried to recharge. Taking time to mentally reset is huge in preventing burnout, and when you're in your dedicated step two studying, you're walking a fine line between ultra productive and burnt out. It is critical for you to find the resources, tools, and activities that support your mental and emotional well being, not only to be successful while you're studying for step, but to be successful in life especially as a student where we have so many stressors. Now during these three weeks of dedicated, my score rose nearly 20 points from 247 at the beginning of my dedicated to 266 on the real deal. It wasn't an easy three weeks by any means, but I hope that this goes to show that pretty big improvements can happen over a short period of time with the right strategy. And I went ahead and created a sample three week schedule that reflects what we just talked about that you can download for free and helping you create your own schedule. It will also actually show how I structured each day and the schedule is called 20 points in three weeks and you can find the link in the description below. Now in terms of the resources that I used, this will be a relatively short list and we've already spoken on the most important ones. My studying centered on three primary resources, the UWorld Step 2 Question Bank, Anki, specifically the Anking Step 2 deck, and NBME slash UWorld practice exams. We just talked about how I used those three resources, but there were two additional things that I used to supplement my step prep. The first is AMBOSS's Biostats and Ethics Library. These two topics are becoming more prevalent on step two, and AMBOSS has an incredible section outlining everything that you need to know. 
So I read those two sections and did the corresponding practice questions toward the end of my dedicated time. I think Amboss is great for fine tuning specific topics and if you have access to it, I would definitely check out their ethics and biostat sections. And some people prefer their QBank to UWorld or will do Amboss instead of a second pass through UWorld and that is completely reasonable. I considered that but ultimately found that I liked the UWorld questions a bit more and didn't want to complicate things by having to navigate two separate question banks. But that may not be the case for everyone and Amboss is a great resource for those who have access to it. That being said, you definitely do not need Amboss to excel on step two. The second supplemental resource that I used was the Divine Interventions podcast. This podcast is fantastic. I began listening to this regularly towards the end of my rotations and throughout my entire dedicated period. The host basically walks through high yield topics that you will encounter on your exam and how to approach them. He also shows really helpful ways of remembering key pieces of information that actually prove pretty useful on the real deal. In one of his podcasts, he actually gave a list of his most high yield podcasts related to step two, and I wrote all of this down with the goal of getting through as many as possible before test day. And this list is also in the schedule link in the description below. But anytime I was driving, taking a walk with Blaze, working out, or really doing anything that could allow for passive learning, I had the Divine Intervention podcast going. And those are the only resources that I used. UWorld, Anki, NBME and UWorld practice exams, a little bit of AMBOSS, and the Divine Intervention podcast. You may have noticed that I did not mention a video resource that traditionally teach certain topics. I felt that the foundation I had was enough to primarily learn through the explanations from my practice questions and the podcast. But everyone will begin their dedicated period with a different foundation of knowledge. So if you feel like you're consistently missing questions from a specific topic, it may be worth your time to check out resources like Boards and Beyond, Sketchy, Online Meded, YouTube, etc. to fine tune your understanding in those specific topics. But don't fall into a common trap where students will spend so so much time reviewing material that then they're limited in the amount of time they could devote to the actual practice questions. The more active learning you can do through practice questions in Anki, the more effective your studying will be. But that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that the schedule that I created can be as helpful for you as it was for me. And again, I hope that just by sharing my experience, you can find some motivation and direction for you to succeed in your own journey. This is by no means a perfect approach. This is just what worked for me. And step two is not the end all be all of your candidacy. And I do not want to discredit or discourage anyone else's step two experience. It's a stressful time in medical school, but you got this. You're only faced with today's brick. So lay it as perfectly down as you can. And when it's all said and done, you'll be proud of the wall that you've built. If you've enjoyed this video or found any of it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. And as always, keep evolving, and I'll see you guys in the next one.